When Nadad the Viking left Norway for the Faroe Islands nearly 1,200 years ago, he never anticipated that his ship would be blown off course and that he'd discover one of the last places on Earth to be inhabited by humans. Iceland, the land of fire and ice. Quite possibly the most beautiful place I've ever been in the world. Wow. We spent 10 days traveling the Ring Road in Iceland in a camper van. If you're considering a trip to Iceland or simply want to experience its vast biodiversity and beauty from the comfort of your home, you're in the right place. Our 10-day Iceland itinerary will give you a solid base for the must-see sites and the hidden gems that make Iceland a country you're going to want to add to your bucket list. Since we arrived on the weekend, we wanted to skip the crowds in the capital city, Reykjavik, and other local destinations, and made our first major stop, Hrunelau. I'm Helena, and we have a tiny pool that is called Hrunelau. And the oldest part of Hrunelau, my great-grandfather built that one in 1890. It was made for bathing people in 1935. My grandfather built the tiny shelter and a little tub in front of the shelter. And that was made for bathing sheep, for sheep dipping. Icelandic words are kind of hard to pronounce, yet several locals shared with us that most names are actually simple. They just literally say what something is. Take the first waterfall on our journey. Seljansfoss. We figured out pretty quickly that foss means waterfall. So if you see foss in the name, it's a waterfall. Seljansfoss means selling the land of waterfalls. By the way, the cliffs of Seljansfoss were once believed to be part of the Icelandic coastline. A scenic 20-minute hike from a parking lot takes you to one of the oldest swimming pools in Iceland. In Iceland, swimming pools are kind of a big deal. In fact, most towns have a geothermally heated pool and kids are actually required to learn to swim in school. While interesting, Seljavatleluk isn't exactly well-maintained and while it's geothermally heated, it's only lukewarm at best. Not many people know this, but a local told us that if you hike just a few minutes past the pool, you'll come across two tiny but secluded hot springs. The catches, you have to walk through ice water to get there. It's worth the hike. Legend has it that a Viking hit a chest full of gold behind one of Iceland's biggest waterfalls, Skogafoss. We couldn't find the treasure, but we did come across a double rainbow. If you ever wanted to spend the night under a waterfall, Skogafoss has a campground that can make that a reality. En route to our next planned destination, we saw a mysterious cave on the side of the road and had to stop. Historically, farmers gathered at Lofsalehetir Cave. Now it's a beautiful location for photography and distant views of Dirkholei and Reynisfjara. Just a few minutes away and up a steep road lies Dirkholei which means hill island with a door hole. We arrived right before closing on a rainy night and the wind was insane, so we didn't fully experience what Dirkholei is known for. Majestic views of black sandy beaches, a castle-shaped lighthouse, and puffins, mostly puffins. We missed the puffins, but here are some, so you're not sad too. Reynisfjara is one of Iceland's many black sand beaches. Oh, the basalt columns. Wow. About 60 million years ago, the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates began to separate, which resulted in a whole lot of volcanic activity. Eventually, Iceland was born. All that black sand is just the cool down magma weathered over time. Reynisfjara is also known for otherworldly basalt columns and these two trolls. They once pulled ships to shore from the ocean, but one night they were out too late and the rising sun turned them to stone. No one really visited Fjadrar Gluver until Justin Bieber's 2015 music video, I'll Show You. Now it gets a lot of attention, and rightly so. It's gorgeous. 
100-meter canyon walls tower over the icy river that helped carve out this canyon some 9,000 years ago. It was cloudy and wet when we arrived around 1 a.m. shortly after sunset, so it was a little dark, but we had the entire canyon to ourselves. If you visit Iceland in the summer, take advantage of the sun never fully setting, and you can have some of the most beautiful places in the world all to yourself. If you ever have the chance to hike a glacier, you've got to take it. With glaciers covering 11% of its landmass, Iceland is the ideal destination for the experience. We hiked Fatjökull, or Falling Glacier. Fatjökull is part of a much bigger ice system. Europe's largest glacier, Vatnajökull. The glaciers are melting. Our tour guide has seen them receding firsthand in her few years as a guide. But at 3,000 square miles and up to 1,000 meters thick, Vatna Yokel will be around for you to see it firsthand. Our next stop was the most breathtaking thus far on our trip. Fjallsarlon is a small glacial lake fed by Vatnjökull, that massive glacier we just mentioned. Glacial ice literally falls into this little lake, giving us up-close views of icebergs. We'd never seen anything like this. That is, until we drove a few miles to a much bigger lake, Jokulsarlon. It nearly moved us to tears. About 70 years ago, Vatna Jokul dropped icebergs directly into the Atlantic Ocean. But the glacier started receding and Jokulsarlon, or Glacial Lagoon, was formed. The 100-foot tall blue and white icebergs that fall into the lagoon don't stay. They slowly melt and we spend hours enjoying the abundant wildlife and watching the icebergs make their way the short distance into the ocean. Glacial ice is sometimes blue because the massive weight of the snow above exerts extreme pressure pushing out the air bubbles. When ice becomes this dense, it can appear blue. The icebergs slowly drift out to Breda Macrosantur, or as us tourists like to call it, Diamond Beach. Depending on the time of year and hour of day, you'll literally find glacial ice washing up on shore. We were there early in the morning when the beach was empty and the ice was abundant on the black sandy beach. It was hard for us to leave. In fact, Lila said that if there was only one place in Iceland she could return to, it would be Jokosarlon and Diamond Beach. Some destinations require you to drive in the dirt for a minute or two, but it's usually worth it. Vesterhorn is a photographer's dream. A massive, flat, black, sandy beach set against the backdrop of dramatic peaks reaching nearly 1,500 feet into the sky. At the right time of day, the wet black sand becomes a giant mirror. Sprinkle in some billowy clouds and your Instagram feed just might explode. A ring road trip is incomplete without a stop in the storybook harbor town of Sedisfjordr. Fairy tale buildings, snow capped mountains, and waterfalls set the stage for an iconic rainbow path that leads to an adorable blue church. About the only proper meal we had out during the entire trip was at the Nordic restaurant, and it wasn't bad. I have no idea what the cost was because I never really figured out that whole conversion rate thing. I don't really want to know. The second most powerful waterfall in all of Europe, Dedifoss, is a monster. It's so mighty that the surrounding rocks vibrate. While its roar is impressive, it wasn't our favorite. To see it from the west side, you have to hike across what feels like a lunar landscape, fighting off intolerable gnats the entire way. While other waterfalls flow with blue water surrounded by rich vegetation, Dedifoss's sediment-rich water looks kind of dirty and vegetation is sparse. We jumped back on the ring road and headed to Mivatn. A massive, mysterious blue geothermal pool was our first stop, the Mivatn Nature Baths. 
It's ridiculously relaxing and a great place to meet people from around the world, like our new friends from Germany. There are several sites worth stopping for while in the Mivatan area. Kraflaviti is an easily accessible crater with an aqua blue lake. The blue is the result of the way bacteria and elements from the geothermal activity reflect the light. Viti means hell in Icelandic, referring to the way this explosion crater was formed. Nearby is the quirky, perpetually flowing Krafla shower. Lila wasn't afraid of the geothermally heated water. To see more displays of all of that heat escaping the earth, visit Namafjallkverir, where you can get pretty up close and personal with fumaroles and mud pots. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, you'll be familiar with this hot spring cave, Griotikyo. Most of the cave is visible from the sunlight streaming in. But here's a secret. If you go to the right and bring a light, there's more to see. Though tempting, bathing here is not allowed. Legend has it that in the year 1000, the fate of Iceland's religious future was in the hands of the pagan law speaker, Porker Lusretogori. When he decided on Christianity, he cast his Norse idols into the waterfall Gothafoss, waterfall of the gods. With our home base in Oregon, we've seen a lot of waterfalls. Gothafoss rivals them all. But there is one more in Iceland that is even more awe-inspiring. If you like beer and you're looking for something a little bit different, Iceland's got you covered. At the beer spa, you can soak in a hot tub full of beer and drink all you want from a private tap. It's supposed to be good for your skin, the soaking part, not the drinking part. They also offer regular hot tubs outdoors and the view is out of this world. I wanted to ride Icelandic horses on the beach and called Langhus Farms. Luca, the owner, explained to us that the beach was closed but gave us other options, including another farm that did have beach access. I almost called them, but Lila instantly connected with Luca and we headed a ways off the ring road to Langhus Farms. Luca and her assistant Anouk gave us an unforgettable experience and one of the highlights of our trip. We'd never been on a more magical ride and Luca's hospitality is second to none. If you make it to Northern Iceland, this is the one adventure you have to book. Gravarkirkja, Grave Church. This, the oldest church in Iceland, was originally built in the late 17th century. Most other turf structures from that time period were simple, but this one stood out for being more ornate. In fact, the craftsman's name survives today. As new fans of Iceland's hot springs, we couldn't pass up a dip in Grettir's pool. My father, he built this pool. He came here as a little boy with his parents. Then it was just a little pond, but there was the story about the outlaw Grettir. Grettir hid out in this nearby island. The island that's over there, Trongheim. He swam from the island to here in the icy water. And he bathed in this pool and it was called Grettislaug after him. And my father, he wanted to recapture the history, so he did. Please come and look at it and enjoy it with us. If you're only coming to Iceland for a few days, you'll probably end up in the Golden Circle, a loop that starts from the capital city Reykjavik and hits several of Iceland's most popular attractions. We made our way to the Golden Circle and our first stop was the Geysir Hot Spring area, named for the geyser that all geysers are named from, Geysir. Along with Old Faithful, it's the most famous geyser in the world, but at the moment, it's dormant. However, there's plenty of other geothermal fun and Strokkur puts on a show several times an hour. The biggest attraction in the Golden Circle is Gullfoss, the most epic waterfall we've ever seen. Drones are not permitted, and this video just doesn't do it justice. You're just gonna have to come to Iceland to feel its intensity for yourself.
The only experience to rival our Icelandic horse adventure was snorkeling in Silfra. Here, the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates meet. And because they're pulling apart, there's a long, lot of uh, earthquake here in Iceland. So actually, make all this crack. Uh, and Silfra, where we are going, is one of these cracks. Silfra is the only place in the world where you can dive in a crack between tectonic plates. The crack is filled with glacial water that's been filtered by underground lava for 30 to 70 years, and it's said to be the clearest water in the world, with visibility of over 100 meters. The water's only about two degrees Celsius, so we needed to wear dry suits, which was a first for both of us. Once you put your face in the water, you enter an entirely new dimension. I learned to scuba dive over 30 years ago, and I've never seen anything like this. We're not city people, but on our last day, we did head into Reykjavik. We happen to show up on Fisherman's Day, which is a national holiday. To celebrate roles that the seamen have done for Iceland in honor of the fishermen. It was fun to be out of the more touristy areas and to mingle with the locals. Looking to grab a bite to eat, we accidentally found the famous Rainbow Street, which looks up at one of the tallest buildings in the country, Hapskrimskirka. In front is a statue of the Viking Leif Erikson, who Icelanders will tell you found North America 500 years before Christopher Columbus. For a more intimate look at our adventure and to see how us boomers survived 10 days in a camper van in Iceland, click right here.